well, we're going to try this again. Uh, good morning, friends. My name is Will Green. Uh, some of you were just on, perhaps, um, and were having some trouble uh, hearing my sound. Hopefully, you're able to hear me now if you're joining me uh, live. Go ahead and sound off in the comments and let me know that you can actually uh, hear me this go around. Um, I want to say good morning to you all. It is good to be with you uh, for a little time of wandering toward wonder. Uh, my name is Will Ed Green, and this is a time each week that we set aside to think about the places, spaces, and people through which joy, wonder, and delight are being born into our lives. Uh, I serve as an associate pastor and the director of discipleship at Foundry United Methodist Church in Washington, D.C., uh, and I'm tuning in from my own home here in D.C.'s Brightwood Park uh, neighborhood. Uh, hopefully, y'all are able to, to hear my sound. If somebody wouldn't mind, let me know in the comments if you can. That would be great. Um, and as you're doing that, I also want to invite you to put in the comments uh, if you're comfortable where you're wandering in from today uh, and where you're finding a little bit of wonder in your own life. Uh, certainly, it gives me a chance to give thanks for you. Um, it gives me a chance uh, to kind of see where you're finding wonder, which helps me in turn find wonder too. So take a few moments and share that in the comments if you get a second. So as I've been thinking about finding wonder and joy in my own life this week, I've also been holding that intention with all this shifting guidance about masking and social distancing and returning to life after COVID-19. And I've got to be honest, I've been feeling a little bit of emotional and spiritual whiplash. How about y'all? Um, Anybody else out there feeling a little like, oh, I don't know what to do? Um, I know that I've talked with some friends uh, that, uh, that certainly have been feeling that. We're on our way back to something that was once familiar, but we're not there yet, right? Uh, and so today, as we think about wonder, I want to spend some time thinking about uh, waiting, what it means uh, to find wonder and joy in the interim times, in the in-between times, in the uncomfortable, unclear, unbounded, out-of-process times in our lives. Uh, and perhaps how it's those moments in particular um, that hold a lot more wonder than this type A structure-loving recovering institutionalist might want to admit. Um, and perhaps some of you are uh, like that too, right? Can I get a shout out from any of my, uh, my control freaks, organizational obsessors, roadmap lovers, and type A friends? Uh, any of you out there this morning as you're watching? Because I'm going to guess that if you are, you've been feeling some of this tension too. So if you joined us last week, you'll know that last Sunday was Ascension Sunday, right? It's the Sunday where we celebrate uh, the ascension of Jesus, uh, and it comes just before Pentecost Sunday when we celebrate the arrival of the Holy Spirit. Um, it's, a, it's a moment when we see the disciples assuming responsibility for continuing the ministry Jesus began, and yet also being told, uh, do it, but, but, but wait, right? Go and wait. Um, the story, which is laid out in the Gospel of Luke and its companion book, the Acts of the Apostles, or the Book of Acts, uh, records Jesus' ascension into heaven while the disciples are instructed to go back to Jerusalem, having been told everything that's going to happen, and wait. It's now, and it's also not yet. Now, I, I've been doing this, this pastor worship Bible study thing for a minute, uh, but this may be the first time in my own ministry that I've realized the, the profundity, the, the craziness, the, the tension uh, that's unfolding in this text between Ascension and Pentecost. Think about it like this. Put yourself in the disciples' shoes for a minute. Jesus is crucified. He's buried. He's resurrected. And suddenly he shows back up, right? That's crazy enough on its own. We then get a series of stories about Jesus appearing in these surprising, unexpected, and sometimes uncomfortable ways before finally gathering the disciples, leading them back to the Mount of Olives, which, by the way, is where he had just been arrested and led away to die, where he then tells them the Holy Spirit is coming, he lays out their mission and vision as the church, and then he just kind of ascends to heaven, just gets carried up to heaven. And the disciples are left having been told to wait. You can imagine that there was a lot of confusion, 
right? You can imagine that there is a lot of tension. And the truth is, we're really not told what that interim time was like for them. We know that they got together and they prayed. We know that they got together and they worshiped. We know that they got together and they kind of began to prepare themselves for what was coming next. They elected some leadership. Uh, they, they began to kind of situate themselves for ministry. But as far as we can tell, based on the Luke Acts story, they wait until the day of Pentecost, until the arrival of the Holy Spirit to begin their public ministry. They waited. And here's the wild thing that I am just now really beginning to pick up on. Scripture doesn't tell us how long that time of waiting was. Was it a week? Was it two weeks? Was it three months? How long did they have to wait to resume the work? The work that they had stopped. The work that they were told was yet to be. You know, as, as, as the weather has warmed up and vaccinations have rolled out, there has been this kind of low simmering anxiety present everywhere, right? I think we've all been feeling it. When can we get back to the way life was before? Or perhaps we've been feeling the opposite anxiety. Why do we have to go back to the way life was before? But either way, there's been this kind of low level of anxiety, right? Has anybody else been feeling that? I know I have. And then last week, of course, the announcement by the CDC, by Mayor Bowser here in D.C., and by other state and local leaders across the nation really just kind of turned up the heat. So we went from a low simmer to a full-on boil. The, the return to some sense of what once was, the, the normal of life pre-pandemic, came into really sharp focus for folks as mask mandates changed, as, as, as retailers began to shift their policies and practices and procedures um, it gave us this idea, kind of like the disciples had at the ascension, of what's coming. We know that there is something that is going to happen, that the, the period of waiting will come to an end. And yet, like the disciples, we've also been told to wait, right? Vaccination rates have dropped. There's a lot of uncertainty and uncomfort and discomfort based upon where folk are sitting in terms of their ability to access the vaccine, whether or not it's safe for them to take the vaccine, um, whether or not it's safe for them to return to, to some sense of, of, of kind of regular rhythm and life. And what's more, just like the disciples, we don't know how long a return to what once was is going to take, which just makes the anxiety and, 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 uh, and frustration even higher, right? Schools and churches and businesses, we've, they've all set out different pathways. We've all set out different pathways for how we're going to return. And so for me, then the question becomes, what happens in the waiting? And what can we learn from the disciples about what they do? Now, Again, we've already said that scripture doesn't paint a clear picture of everything the disciples did as they waited on the arrival of the Holy Spirit, right? But it's not hard to imagine. It's not hard to imagine that there was some struggle along the way. Because here's the deal, right? These moments of, of profound anxiety and fear, they have a, a tendency to excite the less exciting parts of our human nature, right? Uh, the, the, the fear and anxiety that comes with not being in control. Uh, it, it, it leaves some of us uh, grasping for anything we can do to hold on to power uh, over uh, what's going on in our own lives. We seek to solidify our ability to dictate what's right and wrong, just, not just for ourselves, but often for other people, right? We want to become a, an armchair expert, Right? which is oftentimes really just a function of our own need to be the one who's making the, making the decision. Uh, we, we sometimes have a tendency to make ourselves the captains of other ships, right? I've watched exchanges on the street between people who are yelling at one another about, are you wearing a mask? Are you not wearing a mask? What are you doing? Who do you, who do you, know, who do you think you are? There's this tendency uh, to, to, to grasp for control, to... to to try to insert ourselves in ways that help us feel safe and secure. Uh, there's a tendency sometimes to dismiss the experience, perspective, or opinions of others. Oh, we've just got to go back right now. We've just got to, we've got to return to normal without taking into consideration what that means for our friends and our families and our neighbors, for the ways that the pandemic has shifted and reshaped our relationships with other people. 
we have a tendency to become singularly uh, self-focused, right? So concerned with addressing our own feeling of tension or anxiety that we're not really listening fully or receiving fully what's happening in the lives of others and in the lives of our community. And, you know, sometimes this fear and anxiety thing and these moments of waiting, man, it, it, it has a tendency to make us uh, want to silence that with which we disagree, right? Uh, so we, we engage in this kind of selective reception of information. We gather up only that which reaffirms our own perspective or opinion. We selectively redistribute that information uh, to other folk. Uh, and then we wind up engaging in this kind of back and forth shaming and blaming. And what's more what's more troubling in all of this, right? Or what's more, what's more draining in all of this for so many of us is that in the midst of all the fear and anxiety and uncertainty, we have a tendency to overextend and overexert our bodies and our spirits, right? We try to become all things to all people. We, uh, and, and I'm guilty of this. We don't necessarily draw healthy boundaries. Uh, we, we burn out, we burn up. And of course, all of this impacts our sense of self, it impacts our relationships with the people we love. It impacts our ability to authentically live out our values and commitments in the world because we're so caught up in the uncertainty that we're not investing ourselves in the slow, gradual, careful examination of how we're showing up in the world. So I'd like to think, you know, that maybe the disciples, maybe the disciples and some of what we read in the story between Ascension and Pentecost um, have something to teach us about the waiting, right? Um, and what does scripture tell us that they did? They, they spend time doing things that ground them in their mission and vision and values, right? They worship and they pray and they study scripture. They remind one another who they are and what they're called to do. There's this, this, this attention to making sure that they're not in these moments of uncertainty, forgetting to attend to the things that really matter in their lives and in their ministry. They spend some time preparing themselves for what's to come, right? Um, they elect and they identify new leaders. And that may seem kind of silly to us, but they're, they're setting up the structure and the system they need so that when the Holy Spirit does come for them, they're able to immediately begin the work that they're called to do. And they, they care for one another. And this, this I think, is, is perhaps the most important thing right? They're clearly investing time in their relationships with one another. Uh, they're, they're, they're reminding themselves that in their own individual anxiety about what's going to come next, that they still have responsibility to the community that they're a part of and to the people that they're called to serve, which I'm sure also meant caring for themselves. So with all of that in mind, this is kind of what I've been thinking about. Um, and it's, it's really just trying to sit down and get clear about, uh, in the midst of these days, uh, how we're going to continue showing up in ways that are authentic and honest and compassionate, that embody our mission and vision and values as people uh, of Christ, as, the, as the, the, the people of Christ, what it means for us, um, both individually and collectively, uh, to hold this interim time in a way that allows in the fullness of time uh, for us to, to step into what comes next, whatever that might be. And so um, I just wanted to share with you some of the things that I've been thinking about. And maybe as I'm doing so, you can be thinking about uh, the values, the principles, the kind of guiding uh, frameworks for your own life. You know, for me, um, hospitality is key. So as I'm thinking about being with my friends and my family, as I'm thinking about my work as a pastor, as I'm thinking about just showing up in the world, whether it's in my condo building or it's in my neighborhood, um, making sure that I am creating spaces um, where people feel safe and welcome and the fullness of who they are, right, uh, is really important. And, and, and I want to be clear that for me, this doesn't just mean that my space is welcome. Right, so that I'm expecting that you know, if you come into my space, then you'll be okay. That means creating spaces in which people know, before they ever get into whatever space I'm in, um, that they are safe to show up. Hospitality is key, and so I'm going to keep wearing my mask. 
I'm going to, uh, to keep social distancing. I'm going to keep uh, doing what I need to do uh, to make sure that the people I'm called to serve and the people that I love know that they're always welcome and wanted, right? You know, for me too, it's, it's, it's thinking about this as a both and moment. Um, and so I'm going to continue showing up in a variety of ways based upon what the relationships that I have um, need. I've got friends that still don't feel comfortable leaving the house. And so I'm going to continue being on Zoom. I'm going to continue uh, showing up for them in the ways that I can. I've got friends that want to meet in person. And because I feel safe to do that, I'm going to do that too in ways that are safe and respect their boundaries. Um, you know, we're going to have to, for a while, I think, hold the both and and be comfortable with the fact that that's not going to look like perhaps um, returning to what once was. And, and maybe that's a gift, right? Maybe there's some gift in, in, in realigning relationships in ways that allow us to each hold our own boundaries more honestly and authentically. And then, of course, you know, for me, it's 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 realizing that it's not just about me, right? Like, I don't live my life just for myself. Um, I have a responsibility, a personal responsibility, as a as a as a human being, uh, to my fellow human beings, and a pastoral responsibility to model good and safe behavior, to take into account not just my own needs or desires, but the needs and desires of those whom we love and are called to be in community with, right? Uh, and so that means thinking creatively and critically about um, uh, being clear about the difference between my needs and others' needs, right? Um, and taking all of it into account. It means spending some time thinking about how we're showing up, what we do when we do show up, and why we're doing it that way. Uh, so that I'm not inadvertently uh, trampling on other people's boundaries, nor am I letting them trample on my own. And the key to all of this, in my mind, right, is, is just to continue being uh, exceedingly gentle, right? Be exceedingly gentle with yourselves. Know that it's okay not to be okay, that it's okay to need more alone time and not to leap back into life at a breakneck pace. Know that if you're ready to leap back into life and can do that in a way that's safe, uh, that's okay too. Uh, just because, uh, just because, um, Everybody else is doing a thing doesn't mean that we have to do a thing, right? It's okay to be gentle with yourself and to set the boundaries that you need to show up in ways that allow you to maintain right relationship with God and with other people, because that's what it's about, right? And it's also important to be gentle with others, right? Our job right now is not to shame or judge or instruct folks about how they should show up. Our job is not to set boundaries for other people. Our job is not to say, oh, well, you know, come on if you want to. We're just going to do the thing. Our job is to create the kind of community that brings people along, that creates space for new people um, to be a part of our lives, that, um, that welcomes people to show up as lovingly and authentically as we desire to show up in the world too, right? So what I want to invite you to do this week uh, is to just spend some time thinking about what values you want to ground yourself in, what relationships, right? I remember, as we discussed last week, the importance of having your goats. What relationships do you need right now to help you stay grounded um, and rooted in the things that matter the most? Um, what permission do you need to give yourselves? Look, guys, take authority. Take authority. Give yourself permission to be gentle with your own needs. It's okay. And give yourself permission to tend to your tender places, the places where you're scared and anxious and unsure. Uh, what permission do you need to give yourself to let go of control and anxiety and fear so that you can take up, so that you can hold uh, the invitations to authenticity and honesty and vulnerability that allow us to live more faithfully and gracefully in the world. Because here's the, here's the thing, as you're doing that work, as we're doing that work together, um, as Pastor Ginger reminded us so powerfully on Sunday, uh, God doesn't leave us in the interim or the in-between forever, nor does God leave us without a vision of what is to come. Uh, ascension doesn't spell the end of the story. Pentecost happens. Spirit does come. Something will happen. 
that's going to, to, to help the community know that it's time to take the next step, to do the next thing. Uh, and our job in the in-between, our job in the in-between is to stay grounded and present so that when that time does come, we can, we can show up in the fullness of the power that God gives us to, to change the world. So that's what I've been thinking about this week. That's the work that I'm doing this week. Uh, perhaps that's some work that you can be doing this week too, as we try to hold this in-between moment. Um, and remember, uh, like uh, the second letter to Timothy says, the spirit that God gives us is not one of fear, but one of power and love. A spirit of power and love. I hope you can find that for yourself in these moments as we wait on what comes next. Just a couple of quick reminders for us uh, as we sign off for the day. Uh, we've got a couple of uh, Christian education information opportunities for you coming up in the next couple of weeks. There's the Shape of Our Lives. That class starts on Sunday uh, at 10 a.m. I hope you'll join us. We're going to drop a registration link in the comments if you'd like to. Uh, we've got Sculptures and Their Sculptors, uh, which is a fellowship tour. It's, it's actually being led by Stephen Roberts, a member of our community who is a docent at the National Gallery of Art. Uh, he'll be uh, giving, a, giving a tour of some of the sculptures at the National Gallery. Uh, and so we hope that you'll consider registering for that. That's free um, and it'll be a gift, I promise. And we want to encourage you to consider giving to help support youth missions, particularly youth missions through the Appalachian Service Project, which makes homes warmer, safer, and drier across Appalachia. Our youth will be going at the end of June and beginning of July. Uh, and so they're raising funds right now to help fund that effort. Uh, we're going to drop a link where you can go to our giving page. And when you see the drop down menu, if you'll just click Youth Missions, you can give to help support ASP uh, and make a difference not only for our youth, but for the people of Appalachia. And then finally, we hope that you'll continue to join us as we offer these ponderings, these thinkings, uh, th these, these moments of, of, of being together on Facebook every day. Pastor Ginger will be with you tomorrow at noon for Ponderings from the Purple Parlor. Uh, and I know that that will be a real gift. So I hope that you'll receive that. Uh, thank you for joining me. Thank you for those who stuck with me through the technical difficulties. I'll uh, look forward to being with you next week. And until then, remember, uh, God loves you and we love you. Uh, be gentle with yourselves and take good, good care. Uh, until then. Bye for now.